Hi ladies and gentlemen, Maureen O'Reilly from Berkey again. This video is going to be aimed more towards people that are looking to buy spells or people that are going to, uh, that want to approach a spellcaster like myself. I'm not a spellcaster, I'm a magician and I offer my services. But you get the gist, okay? People that want to buy magical services like what I offer. And I'm simply going to give you a short walkthrough on things you need to avoid in general when trying to approach someone like that. Things that you need to keep in mind to prevent yourself from being scammed. And But before I get to that, um, in case you're watching this YouTube video directly, uh, look for links in the description below. There's a link to the article on what it is that I'm talking about on this topic and there's also a link to my web shop. Before I uh, get to what I just said, uh, giving you these tips and pointers, I am going to discuss, unfortunately, I am going to not discuss in detail or extensively, I am just going to give you the short version of, unfortunately, that um, of, of how, how unprofitable the occult community is. People that engage in the occult or seek out the occult or occult-based services in general are people that are are people unfortunately that uh, again I'm I'm it's I'm sorry to say it not literally sorry but in a figurative sense sorry to say so these people are losers overall the majority okay overwhelming at the very least 70 percent of people that seek out the occult and people that practice the occult they are they they are people that suffer from a whole range of mental and and physical disorders and their life is in a near constant state of disarray and, and unorganization and bottom line is that these people are like parasites they make up the lowest class of society along the lines of uh, what poor people um, um, criminals low lives people that have no decency or honor people that can be compared to vermin people that are comparable to vermin and rodents and yeah again i'm sorry to say i'm not i'm not sugarcoating anything uh, that's it so just for those people, people that are um, that are planning on buying a spell or purchasing a spell or approaching a spellcaster for hire, I'm going to give you the short version. Things that you need to keep in mind is to be respectful. Okay, um, don't try to badger or harass someone that you uh, don't try to badger or harass a, a seller. It's not going to buy you. It's not going to do you any good as a buyer. Uh, don't judge a, don't judge the book by its cover okay don't just take everything at face value um, see to it that there's some kind of refund policy or pay via an appropriate medium like PayPal where you have buyer protection where you're eligible for buyer protection where you stand a chance in getting your money back of obviously don't pay via a one a one uh, a one-way medium like I don't know Western Union or something like that now nah, or moneygram um, yeah, uh, and again, I can't stress this enough. Just watch out for scammers. Okay, there are a lot of scammers out there, but that's also in part. I'm not standing up for scammers, but when I look at the, some of the people that approach uh, um, or that want to buy magical services, then I'm thinking to myself, these people are practically asking to be scammed. So hence, there that's at least part of the reason or partially the reason for there being so many scammers out there. Use your common sense, okay? Buying occult-based surfaces is not something that is cheap. I'm not saying that you have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars, that you have to spend five figures and six figures on a spellcaster. But keep in mind that the, you need to, common sense will tell you what an appropriate price is for um, what you're asking. Please don't try to buy spells with with just something important. Let's just say you want to buy a well spell, something that will improve your your something that will make you wealthy or something that will will improve your monthly income fivefold for fi with fifty dollars or something like that again i refer back to what i said before <laughs> you're asking to be scammed that's the equivalent that is literally just like buying a car or trying to buy a refrigerator with five dollars just try that try walking into walmart or any other major electronics chain and tell them i want to buy a refrigerator i want to buy a fridge for five dollars you'll see how all the employees are going to be laughing at you and you're not, you're not someone that they're going to forget easily 
uh, you need to brush up on the basics okay um, know exactly what it is that you're asking be at least familiar with magic in a basic sense just google simple things you don't have to teach learn things extensively just google simple things um, and let's see the last thing that I have to say uh, in, in the way of, um, of tips uh, let's see what was the last thing that I was going to say the last thing that I was going to say is that you um, is that you need to be on guard okay look before you leap as the saying goes if you approach a spellcaster google that person's name for example see what the results come up assuming that that person is using a, a real name if if that person isn't using a real name then that's uh, it's not so much a red flag but that is isn't the best of decisions okay it's not a it's not a, it's not a good sign in any case it's not a good omen it doesn't have to be the case that that, that person is a scammer but it's not a good omen do a background check on that person just see for yourself what that person offers exactly what as that person describes again like i said compare that to just basic information out there does that person know what he or she is talking about what does that person offer in the way of a refund what does that person offer in the way of credible proof okay things that things that are tangible things that you can see with your own eyes or something what does that person offer when if you were to place an order with that person if you were to buy one of his or her services don't automatically just buy stuff blindly and have that seller just dictate the terms and everything just tell you okay i'm gonna get to it i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that without submitting any proof okay uh -uh. It, it, that person can even explain to you exactly what he or she is doing and how even the basic mechanics work of, of the service that he or she is offering for example uh, if you were to buy a, some, a spell from a voodoo priest or something that voodoo priest if he or she is legit should be able to explain to you what the basic fundamentals are at the very least what the basic fundamentals are and you can simply compare what he or she said to just googling online or just looking on uh, it looking the topic up on search engines these are all things that you need to keep in mind um, just look around okay see how many customers that person has had if that person has had any bad reviews if that person has an online presence these are all general things that you should be aware of okay be aware that in a worst case scenario if you got scammed that you should just brace yourself for that so that it won't come as a shock always imagine the worst case scenario worst case scenario is that i don't get what i want it doesn't matter if the, if the person is a scammer or not um I, uh, uh -uh. it doesn't matter if uh, the person is a scammer or not if i haven't gotten what i wanted it's it's um that it's just that i didn't get what i paid for um, and i didn't get any results but it's okay because you need to prepare yourself for that you need to be able to set that money aside okay i'm gonna set 300 dollars aside for this and if i snooze i lose so to speak you snooze you lose okay so if that is it then that's just it and the story moving along but you need to keep in mind and common sense and and that will help go a long way in in seeing to it that you get the most out of uh, your occult purchases that's all